From Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, USA, and the home of hot chicken, it's the Rick Altizer Show. Sit back, buckle up. Rick will talk with the movers, shakers, and creators who put Christ in Christian entertainment. He's a man who's clear so the world can hear. Here's Rick Altizer. Hey, thank you for joining me today. Uh, My guest today is uh, film director David Cunningham, and I'm talking to him uh, via the magic of, uh, of, of special effects from Hawaii. David, welcome to the show. Aloha. Thanks for having me. Man, Hawaii. I want to be there so bad. I know. I know. You got to watch our movie and, and you can feel like you're, you're here. I love it. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what you're doing in Hawaii, about your, what, the movie making you're doing there. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm from Hawaii, grew up here. We've got three, four generations on an island. And um, I, I made a couple of, of independent movies here years ago, one of which put me on the map with the studio. is a movie called Two End All Wars starring Kiefer Sutherland, a, a World War II POW movie. And that, that caused me to kind of be a gun for hire for the studios for about a decade, but really wanted to come back to the islands, tell stories here. And I've partnered with the government here on building a studio and uh, this movie, Running for Grace, is one of the first movies coming out of our studio here on Hawaii Island, Kona, in Kona specifically. I love it. Um, I saw the movie this week. It was amazing how it, the, it, the look of your movie was just spectacular. It just, you know, your, your visuals, your lighting, your cinematography, it was so well done. Uh, how did you, what, what kind of crew did you have? Did you... Is it a local crew? Do people come in to do it? What, tell me a little bit about your lighting and your cinematography. Yeah, we had an, an amazing cinematographer. His name is Akis, and he's originally from Greece. And he just was was a master of, of light. And, of course, we have a, some amazing light to work with here in the islands and some amazing landscapes and looks. And um, we were both really trying to pull off a, a kind of a dreamy, poetic-like feel, almost like a you know a fairy tale um, set in the 1920s. And uh, so that that's what we were going after, and and have a kind of an oversaturated look that really felt like you were being swept away to another time and place. We're talking about the movie Running for Grace. It just came out, and uh, you can get more information about how you can view it by going to Running for Grace Movie. Dot com. Uh, what kind of things uh, do you want? Uh, are, are you looking for as far as uh, getting the movie distributed and, and uh, getting it into hands of people? Well, right now, this week, we are currently in cinemas in eleven cities, and you can, as you mentioned, you can go to our website and see what theaters near you. And if it's not in a theater near you, not to worry. We're um, on iTunes Premium, Video on Demand. Uh, premium and uh, Amazon Premium, so you can buy it and download it there. Uh, but really, we're we're celebrating the themes of adoption, of of belonging, of youth at risk, and it's it's a, a film made for the whole family. I, I made it with the intention of my whole family of five wanting to see this. We often wrestle over the remote control. Everybody wanting their their kind of movie. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be great to make a movie that the whole family actually wants to see together? And and so that's that's what we attempted to to set out to do. Well, it was uh, like, as I said, it was a beautiful movie. the The look was just spectacular. I mean, it it looked like it's a sixty million dollar movie, or you know, I don't know how much what your budget was, but man, it looks expensive. It looks so good, and it's a great Thank little you. and it's a great little love story. I mean, it's a nice. It's just a very, uh, very great movie and enjoyable. My wife just loved it. And uh, my mom's in from out of town and she watched it with us as well. And she loved it too. So you got all my family on board. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, you know, we wanted to have a, a simple tale, you know, set in another time and place, but that, but it's still dealing with relevant topics. And the the love story is certainly a big part of the plot. And the identity piece is is really kind of the message that we're, we're really going after, and and we wanted a love story that that had some purity to it, and and was was innocent, and um, not not too many of these these th- those these days, 
And um, yeah, so we're, we're super proud of it. And it stars Jim Caviezel, who starred in The Passion of the Christ, and, and Matt Dillon, and Ryan Potter, who is going to be playing the new Beast Boy for Teen Titans coming up. And uh, found a fantastic soundtrack from an amazing uh, composer and amazing visuals from our cinematographer. So we're really proud of it. Yeah, it's just all the way around. It was just so well done. What uh, what brought you to make the movie? What what caused you to want to do that with this particular well, movie? Yeah, well, it was really the motivation with the the whole concept of of wanting the whole family to be able to see a movie together, and really the 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 whole concept of the power of adoption of how you know when one child's adopted. Um, it doesn't just impact that child it, it, and, a, and a family, but it can actually transform a community. And this is a story set in the 1920s when it was actually illegal to adopt children of mixed ethnicity. They called it racial integrity. And it's about a little boy who's half Japanese, half Caucasian, who's rejected by both communities. And uh, a new doctor comes to town, played by Matt Dillon, who's there to serve the plantation. And he takes the boy under his wing to, to be his medicine runner, to run medicine up up the mountain to the immigrant coffee pickers. And uh, a, a romance ensues with the plantation owner's daughter. And it's it's really about overcoming obstacles and, and not giving up on your dreams and trusting that there will be grace as you, as you pursue your dreams. And I uh, do love the message of adoption that's in the movie. Uh, is there anything about adoption for you personally that uh, attracted you to that? Yeah, you know, I we haven't adopted ourselves as a family, but this is my third project to do that champions adoption and and trying to get behind those that have. Jim Caviezel has adopted two children from China, and I know it's close to his heart and and so many. And really, my heart was my friends that have been adopting and fostering, and I, I wanted to say thank you. I wanted to champion them for what they are doing. And so we've been doing these red carpet premieres. We've done 13 of them across the nation, honoring families that have adopted, honoring folks that are fostering, folks that are working with kids at youth. And, you know, they would rock down, walk down the red carpet with our movie stars and, and, and bless them and love on them. And uh, it was amazing to see, you know, we had one group of, of youth at risk from the projects who – who were too shy. They didn't want to walk down the red carpet. And we're like, no, that's for you. You need to go. And, and it was just amazing to see them built up uh, with a little bit of love and recognition. Now, it also, as you had mentioned earlier, it features uh, actors Matt Dillon and Jim Caviezel. Had you worked with these actors before? No, I almost worked with Jim some years back on another project that got sidelined. And, um, but... I, w- I was privileged to work with them both on this one, and they, you know, the main reason why actors at their status will 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 take on a movie because they get lots of opportunities is the the script and do they trust the director? And I was blessed that they they loved the script and they were fans of some of my other movies, so um, there was some trust there and and I had a great experience working with them. You're listening to The Rick Altizer Show, and my guest today is uh, director David Cunningham, and we're talking about his new movie, Running for Grace. And uh, you can get information about how to see the movie uh, by going to runningforgracemovie.com. Uh, David, how long have you been directing? A while, my whole adult life. So I don't know, it was 20, 25 years. Uh, this is my eighth movie to make. Uh, to direct, and I've I've directed and and produced I don't know countless documentaries in about fifty countries, and so this yeah this is kind of the only thing I really know how to do, <laughs> so I'll keep on doing it. <laughs> what about uh, what about directing? Do you like? I think you know bringing a vision that's that's in your head and and rallying all these talented people, whether it's crew and cast or music later and, and editorial and and focusing everyone to 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 execute that vision and then it's it's such a joy to see when audiences get to experience that you know that all started off in your mind and and um I, so i really enjoy the whole process I, I i love storytelling as a whole 
and um, but each step of the way, I love getting dirty and being in the trenches with everybody, and I love being with the composer at the end, work, working on the music. So it's it's all a real privilege to do. Ton, tons of work, very requires a lot of tenacity, but uh, very rewarding. And uh, working with actors that can be challenging. Uh, working with Matt Dillon. Jim Caviezel, uh, when you work with actors of that stature, is it is it different? How does that differ from working uh, with with you know maybe actors that aren't aren't quite as well known? Do you have to approach it differently with 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 them? You know, you do. There's a reason why these these kinds of folks are a brand, and really, what it's about is finding out what is the what is the best way they work that you can serve them in their process, and at the same time it being compatible to your your schedule and your budget and the other actors. So it's really about trying to understand each other's process and and facilitate that and and really requires trust. And um you know when you're dealing with an ensemble with many many actors and characters all in the same frame, you know you you have to kind of spread yourself thin to be there and supportive. But each each actor has their own process. So the sooner you can figure that out to be there for them, um, I think I think that's where you can really start finding the magic. Yeah, how to get their input, and and then uh, if they have an idea that you don't like as much, how to navigate around that without crushing them, or you know, or I, I it's yeah, just, it's very yeah, political, it's, you know. <laughs> it can be, you know, and some actors they want a whole lot of rehearsals and. Some want to go right away, and so when you you're trying to manage that, and so therefore some actors will peak at you know the third or fourth take, while the other ones are are just ramping up. So you, it's it's a bit of a juggling act, and a lot of it has to do with trusting your gut and and the 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 cast trusting you and having respect for you, and um, a lot of that just comes with. With experience, and after you've done it enough times, you can start to get into a rhythm. So, are, are you involved in the funding? Getting the, I mean, because it's it's just getting so expensive to make movies these days. Um, what's what's? Uh, tell me a little bit about how that came about with this film. Yeah, so um, on my the the independent films that I've directed, I've also been been uh, the the producer uh, one of the key producers and been very involved in the the financing pieces when i direct for the studios i've been more or less a hired gun as a director and it's not easy and it's it's tough right now where it's it, and, and that's the reason why it's so important for people to to get out and watch these kinds of films with with the day and age of multi conglomerates i i was told a stat i think it's accurate that by the time Disney merges with Fox, they're going to have about a 40% global market share of the entertainment that we consume, and that's one company. And so a handful of companies are are really deciding what the world consumes. And the independent voices are so critical that we get behind and support them. And with the whole shift with the Netflix and Amazons of the world um, – with they they had a big shift i think it was about 1.8 billion dollars that netflix shifted from acquiring films to actually doing original content mm -hmm. and they they follow very carefully the analytics of what people are watching and so they will then come to filmmakers and say i want you to make a show like this with a little bit of that a little bit like this and it's not coming from a place of a of, of original voice so it's a it's tough, and um, we we were were really fortunate that we had some great partners come aboard early on and really believe in this uh, through the process. Ours ours was a, a fraction of the budget of those that we're competing against, um, but uh, yeah, so it's it's tough out there, but uh, you gotta keep on keeping on. We're talking about the movie Running for Grace. I'm speaking with the uh, film director, David Cunningham. And uh, you can get more info about uh, the movie uh, by going to runningforgracemovie.com. Talk about distribution and about some of the problems uh, today uh, and some of the challenges. You mentioned Netflix now making their own 
uh, content uh, to the tune of you know over billions of dollars of uh, of uh, of uh, you know budget they're putting into making this content, and uh, there's so many voices now, so much different places. How, how do you how do you navigate the new landscape of of how to how to get a, a movie distributed? You know, it's we've we've just been in the trenches for the theatrical play of this film, and as I mentioned, it's in theaters now in in I guess about a dozen cities, and it's very difficult. We were up against some other movies that were doing very well, so you kind of get elbowed over because you're the little guy. You get pushed to a different theater, a different time, and really the key has been. Um, a groundswell of of the kind of grassroots aspect where we're having people go, hey, we believe in your movie. We want to buy out a theater and use it to bless adopted families or we, we are passionately going to recommend this film and uh, for digital downloads where you can gift a download to an adopted family. And so I what we have been encouraged by is the faith community, the adopted community, um, folks that really get this that what we're trying to do and you you need you need that grassroots swell to be able to otherwise you're going to get drowned out by by marvel or or the the noise of a transformer movie like literally <laughs> and metaphorically mm-hmm. and so it's it's one of those things where you, you've got to find that niche audience that believes in you passionately you know we're we we didn't make the movie to to preach to the choir, but we we sure want to be a blessing to the choir, and we sure need the choir's help to to get this this thing on out there. Well, it's uh, you know it's it's family friendly. It's it's beautifully shot. Uh, great actors, uh, so it is something the entire family can see. If uh, someone wanted to make it a gift to uh, an adopted family, how would they go about doing that? If you go to the website you mentioned, runningforgracemovie.com, and you'll you'll see a couple tabs on there, and in a few clicks, we, we make it real easy. It's almost like you're sending flowers to someone where you can write in a personal message and send them the movie, and they can download and watch an HD v- version of this. And as you mentioned with the visuals and so on, the HD quality I think is, is important. And it's super easy to do, and uh, hopefully it will be a, a blessing and an encouragement to folks. So, uh, you know, I was reading up about you before I did the interview, and your your parents did they started YWAM? Am I am I reading that right? Yeah, they're the founders of of, of YWAM, Youth of the Mission. So I was one of the first kids born in born into YWAM. That's amazing. Tell me a little bit about that uh, that journey for you. Well, I got this amazing legacy of seven generations of missionaries and ministers on one side of my family and four on the other. My great-grandfather started 13 churches out of a covered wagon in the territory of Oklahoma. My great-uncle was a prisoner of war in World War II at the hands of the Japanese because he stayed with his congregation that the church he started there, sent his pregnant wife home on a Red Cross ship and and stayed with the Christians there um, through the war. My grandmother was the first woman ordained minister in her denomination, and and yeah, my parents started YWAM. So I grew up traveling the world, mission fields, uh, and and seeing amazing people doing amazing things in in a hurting world. And uh, as a young man, I I I had this strong impression that I my calling was to be a filmmaker, and that I was to engage with popular culture and be a part of. Of, of hopefully shaping shaping and transforming that. And uh, so that's what I've dedicated my life to. Why do you uh, find some of the challenges in that when culture seems to be so anti, you know, it's not that they, you know, that we're just not, Christianity isn't relevant anymore. It's almost become something that is hated. There's, there's, there's almost like a pushback in anti. So how do you navigate Wanting to change, be be a positive voice in this culture, uh, yet there's that negative. How do you know where to draw the line when you when you do a film? How much Jesus do you put in a film? You know, uh, do you ever think about that? Ever? 
Yeah, all the time. I mean, for me, we my wife is a makeup artist, and she she was did the makeup and hair on this movie, and she actually started a school with my sister when we were filming on location for cast and crew kids, so that families could stay together when you're making a movie. When oftentimes families are separated and so we have a real heart for the people in the industry we we say to it and through it that we we want to be a part of engaging with the all kinds of people that work in this industry and then through it as a medium to the to the audience and i think it really comes down to you know jesus used all kinds of storytelling they all didn't have an altar call at the end they were but they were all dealing with biblical truths and that's what this movie's about. That's what a lot of my other films have been about. Not not necessarily um, evangelism per se, but definitely a biblical grid and championing themes that that are that are important in our worldview. And but you know it's important. Entertainment means to host. Often people look at entertainment in the faith community as almost like. Um, a waste of time or, oh, you're involved in entertainment. You're, you know, you're not doing something that's important. It's you're entertaining. But when you really look at it, entertainment means to host and hopefully to host well. And people are putting themselves, giving their time, whether it's in their living room or in the theater, and trusting you to take them on a story, on a journey and on a story and 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 something that that they can feel like their time was stewarded well. So I think it's important that we don't do like some kind of bait and switch where people feel like they're going to go and be hosted well and then suddenly kind of preached at. I think we need to bring them into the conversation. And if if the, the movie and the story is, is inspired and uh, relevant, I think that conversations will naturally happen. So th- that's kind of where I'm at. And, and I, I, I think there's a place for all kinds of movies. Don't get me wrong. But that's, that's kind of the lane that I feel called to. Do you think non-Christians are seeing Christian movies? Well, I think the bigger question is, what is a Christian movie? And, and I think there's this brand that has kind of emerged where Faith and family films, you know, is a family movie a, a Christian movie? Is a Christian movie only for families? Is The Passion of the Christ a family movie? Probably not. Right. Yeah, but, yeah. It, you know, and the movie I made with Kiefer Sutherland was a World War II movie about forgiveness in the face of war. And it was rated R because of the violence, because we showed the brutality of what these men suffered and then chose to forgive. Um, you know, not unlike the Passion of the Christ, and so I I think the the branding is an issue, and the more we kind of try to focus that brand under Christianity, I think the more we're going to limit ourselves in reaching people. So I I like to talk more about uh, biblical truths being embedded in story versus something being quote Christian or not. If that makes sense. It does. And you are uh, listening to the Rick Altizer Show. And we're talking about, I'm talking with David uh, Cunningham, the uh, director of the movie Running for Grace. You can get information about the movie by going to runningforgracemovie.com. And David, we're out of time. Can you believe that? Yeah, super fun. Man. Thank you for, thank you for having me. And yeah, if you can just. Continue to let your listeners know to, to check out our movie. And as we mentioned earlier, if they want to gift it to adopted family, they can do so on our website. And uh, really grateful for you having me on. Oh, it's my pleasure. And, and I don't know that you're going to find a movie that looks better than this movie. I mean, this thing just looks, like I said, I was going to say a million dollars, but looks more like, like $70 million. But uh, just, a, just a great job on the actual, just a technical aspect of making this movie. I thought it was really well done, and uh, I encourage people to to go to uh, runningforgracemovie.com to check it out. David, thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate your time. Thank you much. Appreciate you. Have a good one. Uh-huh, thanks. If there's a show you've missed, you can go to my website, rickaltizer.com, and catch up. Or you can listen to my podcast in iTunes or wherever you hear your podcasts. Just search for The Rick Altizer Show. Altizer is spelled A-L-T-I-Z-E-R. I want to thank you for listening. Hey, would you tell a friend about this show and share the love? Be sure to check us out again next week as we discuss how we communicate the gospel through media to our culture. Let's be clear so the world can hear. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. 
Love bears our things, believes our things, hopes our things, endures our things. Love.